right, here it is. Uh, Let There Be Talk episode number 739 on this March, what is it, the 4th. We are already into March. Welcome to the show. Thank you for tuning in. Before we go any further, I want to ask one favor of all the listeners today. I want to see if you can do this. I want to see what happens. And I'm talking about it right at the top so you don't miss it. I want you to go to my YouTube channel and subscribe and like, and I want you to go to my iTunes and uh, leave a review. Both these take about, I don't know, 30 seconds. And if you do it, it really helps the show. So I want to see how many people out of the thousands and thousands of listeners could actually do it. I mean, you're listening to it right now. Press pause, go over, leave a review, then come back. Even if 50 of you guys did it, it would be insane. 50. I'm I'm shooting for 50 out of the uh, couple hundred thousand out there. So how about 50 people? You know who you are. You just press pause right now and you go leave a review. Why wouldn't you do that? You listen every week. It's, it helps me, and I hope I'm helping you with this goddamn free content, people. <laughs> anyway, it is uh, Monday. The sun is finally out here in Los Angeles. God damn, man. It's been raining here. Fucking crazy snow. They had, uh, what did they have? 12 feet of snow in Tahoe over the weekend. 12 feet. And then in... Uh, What was it? Uh, Wyoming. Up out there at uh, Jackson Hole, I believe. 40. What'd they get? 38 inches. 31 inches in 48 hours. It That, man, it is fucking crazy. We're actually having a winter in Los Angeles. We have not had a winter in a long time. In the 70s, we always had winters. I remember growing up in the Bay Area, it just fucking rained all the time. It'd be cold. And then the winters just went away. So we, we're we having a winter now, and it's like, oh, fuck. Let's go back to the drought. <laughs> I'll tell you the lunacy of America right now. This is the absolute lunacy of where we're at in America right now. You see a uh, a clip, and it'll be like, snowstorm. Hold on. Let me see if I can find one real quick. It'll be like snowstorm in Lake Tahoe, you know, and uh, hold on. Let me find this fucking bullshit. God damn it. Uh, here we go. And you click on the, the picture in um, Instagram. And this is where we're at <clears throat> in America right now. Here. Is this it? Yeah. Um. You just click on one, right? And it'll be like uh, 31 inches in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And you click on it, it's like Biden. Fuck Biden. Biden did this. Biden brought the snow. It's because of you libertarians. <laughs> oh, my God. People are nuts. Yeah, well, you know, the reason. I figured, oh, yeah, what about fucking, where's the uh, global warming now? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Fucking nutty. Nutty. Anyway, so it's been uh, it's been raining here like crazy. Gertie's over there sleeping. My dog, you know, I've, I've been trying to switch foods. I talked about it. And she's just, I got her this one food. She was eating it up. And then she was like, nah, go get me some other shit. You heard me. Go get it. So Gertie hasn't ate in like 24 hours because she's just trying to boycott the new food that she was gobbling for a week and loved. Oh, man. Oh, God. I had a fucking insane weekend. I went to Ikea. I have never fucking gone to Ikea. And what is this goddamn mess? I've never been in it, but it's basically like a sad Disneyland. And people go there. I I made the big mistake of going on a Sunday. I don't even know what the fuck I was thinking. Here I am thinking, 
you know, that the uh, economy's bad, the inflation's bad, nobody's spending money. And then you go to an Ikea and there's at least 2,000 people there just fucking buying bullshit. I had to go in there. I needed two drawers for this uh, dr uh, closet thing I got. And I'm just, you, you know, you look on the map and it says, uh rugs in 16 drawers in uh 20 i don't know what that fuck i mean but you just start following the arrows and this ikea in burbank is fucking massive it's like an airport so i'm just walking through this fucking place and i got gertie i made the major mistake of bring bringing gertie because i bring her everywhere i'm one of those dudes you know bring your dog everywhere the the people Joey Diaz hates. Leave your fucking dog at home. What are you fucking doing? <laughs> I love it. I love Joey, man. We're like super close. And there's things I know he hates about me. That's a true fucking friendship. Where you know the guy's fear. The fucking guy brings his dog everywhere. What the fuck are you doing? You don't need to fucking bring your dog. Leave him home. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. I love him. I miss him. Uh, I talked to him a couple days ago. Great. Anyway, I bring Gertie to fucking Ikea. And they, they've they got you fucking, they got you, you know, burned. Like you're on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride or whatever. You know, they make you go through the entire fucking place to get to what you want. It's totally like the Haunted Mansion if the lights were on. And it was just fucking awful, man. Just people everywhere. And oh my God, I can't, I can't do shit like that. You know, just like something that you just need a couple drawers, but they make you, you know, go through the entire fucking place. And it's the stench of bad hot dogs and some kind of fucking food they're serving there. Oh, my God. Who's going down to Ikea? You know, let's go down to Ikea and get some meatballs and a hot dog. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. It's all. Here's what's good for Ikea. I wish Ikea was around when I was growing up because Ikea is the perfect furniture to buy, which, by the way, pay the money to have the fucking people set it up. Don't be dumb because it'll take, you know, days and you'll break pieces. But this is what Ikea is fantastic for. You move into a new apartment. You live there for about a year. You hate it. You throw all that Ikea shit out on the lawn and you move to a new place and start over. Get new furniture. Do not try to take that piece of shit stuff apart and move it to the next place. It's all balsa wood and, uh, you know, confetti. It is all fucking garbage so it's perfect when you're in your 20s you just when i was growing up it was the food time i was telling somebody a couple of days ago i had a studio apartment in san francisco it was so small that you can't have a couch and a bed so you just had the food time and your back just fucking disintegrated over the couple of years you slept on the food time shout out to any uh Anybody that's uh, made love on a futon. <laughs> that is the ground zero of uh, better get your life together. You and your partner, whoever you're sleeping with, a man, dude, a he, them, she, why, whatever. The two of you look at each other after you're done and go, we are fucking on the bottom of the barrel. We just fucked on a futon. <laughs> futon fuck the new band opening for acdc futon fuckers anyway so i fucking had to go there yesterday and then i had to go uh to uh borders thinking about doing a a, a book a semi children slash adult book on uh gertie and Gertie's daughter, Olive. So I went to Borders to uh, do a little research on children's books and, and what, what people are reading and everything. I, I like it to be in the flavor of Charlie Brown, which is 
as I've said before, you watch as an adult and you're going, holy shit, this is dark as hell. And when you watch it as a kid, you're just like, yay, a cartoon. You don't even realize that they're just, you know, showing you incredible, uh, incredible sadness. Just the beat down that Charlie Brown has taken. I think Charlie Brown later turned into uh, Carol O'Connor um, on uh, All in the Family. Archie. Anyway. So I went over to fucking uh, Bordner's and it reminded me real fast why I don't have kids. I bought a brand new uh, coffee and I sat down. I was going to read some books just to see what the uh, flavor was of these books. Because I'm trying to figure out how to make it semi-dark. And uh, so you, you disguise it for children, but then the adults buy it. Cause they fucking, that's what Charlie Brown is. Adults, why I watch it every year. That's the genius of Charles Schultz, man. He's teaching you something in life. And you don't even realize it till later in life when you're like, oh God, Charles Schultz was really telling me, uh, you know, what's going to go down in life. The pull away the football. Some people, their entire life is the football being pulled away from them. That is a reality, my friends. America is getting the pool, the football pulled away from them right now. <laughs> anyway, so I'm over there. So I go to fucking Ikea, lose my goddamn mind. Oh, I forgot the first stop. I bought a, a, a fucking fake tree to put on my patio. I got to get fake trees because they travel all the time. I bought a fake olive tree from Costco. They delivered it. It was completely crushed. So I had to return that. Costco on a Sunday, shoot yourself. Ikea on a Sunday or anytime, shoot yourself. And then Bordner's Books on a Sunday, shoot yourself. It's just all fucking shit. I'm in there. I got my hot coffee. I'm sitting down. I got Gertie. And there's some... Fucking parents that have brought kids to Bordner's apparently because they can't afford an amusement park and they let them play soccer in this goddamn Bordner's. I'm in there and these parents are letting their kids kick a ball around in the bookstore. What the fuck? Oh, it's raining out. Let's go down to Bordner's and kick the uh, kick the ball around. They won't mind. Oh, man. I was so angry yesterday. I came home. First of all, I didn't even tell you what happened. I sat down and I started looking at this book. It's, uh, I think it's uh, Olivia. It's about a pig. Is it a pig? Yeah. Uh, and then I, I, I looked at this other child's book, uh, My First Tattoo, which I thought was pretty edgy. It was a book teaching kids about, you know, their parents are covered in tattoos now. You know, fucking, you know, tattooed faces with, you know, fucking shit all over them and, and this book lets the kids know you can doodle on your face. <laughs> so I'm looking at this book and these kids are kicking the ball around and I'm like, Hey, look out. You're, you're scaring Gertie. I'm trying to be nice. Like, Hey, hey watch out. Hey, watch out. And they fucking knock my brand new copy over. And I was like, and it's just spilled all over the boarders carpet. I was like, that's it. I'm fucking going home. It, today is not for me. And just slipped into some serious depression until last night when I was out doing some fucking shows. Oh my God, I had a fucking... And that's it's so funny, man. I'm, I'm here over here complaining. It's total fucking, you know, bullshit our, uh, complaints compared to people in life that don't have food and or a house or whatever. But, you know, I, I fucking had a rough day. Had a rough day. Out there just gathering material for the stage to, to bark at you guys. And then last night I did this crazy show. And it was interesting because it, it took me back to when I first started comedy. One of the first few times I did a show that was a certain ethnic group. Uh, I've talked about it before. They had shows like Refried Friday, where it was just all Hispanic, or Chocolate Sundays, where it was an urban, all 
urban show, black show, um, different shows like that. Uh, uh, Middle Eastern Wednesdays. I, I don't know. But last night was an international comedy show. And it was for um, four Middle Eastern comedians and then me, all basically brown people, which I fucking love the challenge of uh, of doing a show for people that would no way probably see me in a normal uh, situation. You know, when you do like the comedy store, it's all races. You know, it's all people from all over the country uh, or the world, tourists and stuff. So I enjoy doing stuff. I used to do an earthquake show at the Urban Room uh, at the Comedy Union. And that was, uh, you know, totally different. And I learned something early on by watching Bill Burr. You know, I was up there fucking being all big, like, look at how, yeah. Oh. And Bill was like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Just go up there and be yourself. So I was doing the show last night and a comedian asked me, they go, do you uh, change your material at all? for this uh, audience? And I was like, absolutely not. And I can only say that with confidence from the years ago when I watched Bill destroy in front of any audience. It didn't matter uh, who was in there. He was just had good jokes and he was being him. And the audience totally respects authenticity. And that's what I fucking uh, learned so, you know, I learned so much early on by listening and watching guys like Bill or, uh, you know, different, different giant comedians, Chappelle. And they were just, they were just them. And they, uh, they relied on great joke writing. So I did the show last night and the fucking audience was fantastic. You know, early Dean years ago, you'd just be insecure and you'd lash out. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you guys, you don't understand me. <laughs> and that's another thing. That's America, man. Nobody gets to know each other. So they're like, fuck you. That's where racism comes in. Everybody's fucking stupid. It's like, I'd much rather hang out with that crowd last night than some people in middle America that are all fucking one vision. Political Dean is here today. Yeah, I used to like you, Dean, when you just talked rock, but now you're political. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm not political. I'm just trying to uh, think about how people should just fucking ease off the throttle. We don't have a long time here, man. Why would you spend your time arguing? Fuck, man. The great Richard Lewis passed away last week. He was only 76. You know, and I think about my mom died at 78. We don't have a lot of fucking time here. So get off the fucking keyboards unless you're leaving a review for my podcast on iTunes and YouTube. And just fucking go out there and breathe in some fucking air. You know? Take it easy. Take it easy. <laughs> Who used to say that? My, one of my buddies. Hey, take it easy. Anyway. Rest in peace, Richard Lewis, man. I'm 58. I grew up with all the great comedians. Richard Lewis, George Carlin, Richard Pryor, Cheech and Chong, Johnny Carson, not a comedian, but just providing one of the greatest platforms for these comedians to go on and kill. And Richard Lewis, when I was young, I loved Johnny Carson. And I'd watch Richard Lewis go on there and just fucking be neurotic and radical and is all black and just, just showing me like, oh, wow. Comedy can be all kinds of different styles. You had fucking Richard Lewis, but then you had Kinnison. You had Bill Hicks, but then you had fucking Joan Rivers. You know, you had Jonathan Winters and you had Mork for Mork, Robin Williams, but they're all fucking good. And they all love stand up, you could tell. And they were all dangerous as fuck. All of them were just fucking huffing lines and drinking and living in the 70s and 80s. Like crazy times. No social media, no cancel, nothing, man. Just out there fucking getting cuckoo. 
And I grew up on Richard Lewis. I talked to some friends about it over the weekend and we were, we were fucking uh, struck down. Cause you know, you think about like how fucking much that guy made us laugh, Richard Lewis growing up. And, uh, you know, I didn't know anybody like Richard Lewis when I was growing up in the Bay Area. There wasn't kind of that neurotic Jewish type of, uh, you know, crazy like, ah, I didn't know anybody like that. So to watch that, it was fascinating. Like, this guy's amazing. And, uh, you know, he would kill it on Carson. Oh, my God. And what a great, great career he had. His entire life, he made people laugh. And of course, being on Curb Your Enthusiasm, enthusiasm, Curb Your Enthusiasm, <laughs> Curb, I'm just going to say Curb because I can't say enthusiasm very well because I'm 58. I'm still learning words. I know about 10 words, rad, killer, ropes, fuck, shut up, god damn it. <laughs> what up? Those are my words. Anyway, Richard Lewis, man. Uh, go back and watch some of his stuff on YouTube. Just a, a genius. Crazy thing I read about him, which I didn't know. He actually met Larry David at a summer camp when he was 12. Can you imagine you went to a summer camp when you were 12 years old and... 50, 60 years later, whatever, 50 years later, you're working with Larry David on one of the best TV shows of all time. That shit is mind boggling to me. And I do believe that uh, there are certain uh, magnetic energies that draw people together. And those two, apparently they hated each other at the uh, summer camp. And then they became uh, good friends later in the New York comedy scene so that's pretty fucking wild you went to camp with a guy and you both did comedy your entire lives unbelievable rest in peace richard lewis you uh were an original and you were an incredible comedian and just just man the world is uh the world is less funny absolutely anyway Oh, and shout out that he always wore black. I love that. Just fucking, just rock and roll. Um, I want to I wanna talk a little bit about, this is a solo episode. Obviously, you can tell it's either that or uh, a very long intro. Let's get into the guest right now. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I saw, I, I watch a lot of YouTube and Instagram barn finds. You guys know what barn finds are. If you don't, it's basically where somebody is, somebody's sawing something next door. I just heard it. It never ends in my life. It never ends. Anyway, barn finds are basically, it could be anything. It could be a fucking old guitar. You hear that? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to try to get through the episode with fucking Johnny Saw next door. It's Dahmer. I'm living next door to Dahmer, too. He's just chopping up a body right now. Midday. He's got the fucking uh, bandsaw. <clears throat> Cutting an ear off. Anyway, bond finds could be anything. It could be a... a uh, you see a barn find, a guy's like, we're going over to Frank's house today. Uh, his wife says that the, he left a guitar behind, and you go in there, and there it is. Like, what the fuck? 59 Les Paul never played. He went to Vietnam War, didn't come back, and it just sat in this one spot. But most of the uh, barn finds uh, are about cars, and a couple of days ago, I saw somebody had a 72 Lamborghini. They went and found it in this barn. And there's still, in this day and age, still barn finds happening, which is mind-boggling. You know, every year, 
They'd be like, oh, look at this. We found a, a $4 million car just sitting in this guy's fucking barn for the last 40 years. It's a Dino Ferrari, undriven, 41 miles on it. And when I see shit like that, I immediately, in my mind, the gears in my mind start turning on, well, that's a fucking TV show. Now, I know you say, yeah, they got barn find shows, Dean. And you got one, uh, Jimmy the Tool goes out and finds barn finds stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a mini doc, like 15 minutes of what happened to lead to this person never driving this fucking car and putting it in the barn. And then the lead up to when someone finds it. How does this go? What's the chain reaction of that? The guy meets some woman. He buys his Lamborghini. I'm going to impress her. And then he fucking, uh, you know, he, he drives over and asks her out on a date. She says, absolutely not. You're still ugly. Not going to date you. That car doesn't mean shit, which that wouldn't happen. <laughs> they would be like, oh, 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 by the way, I saw an Instagram video like that. This guy went up to this woman. She's riding a, a motorcycle and he's like, oh, a trail hawk. Yeah, I had one of those. And he's, he's got a camera, a hidden camera on her. And she's like, move on, creep. He's like, oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I just checking out the bike. I had one. I liked it. She said, I, I'm going to my boyfriend's. Get out of here. He's like, oh, okay, cool. And he walks over to his like fucking Ferrari and he goes, watch, she'll come cruising over. And sure enough, she's getting ready to put her helmet on. She sees the car and she runs over there. Hey, so uh, sorry I was rude. I was just uh, uh, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> it just burns rubber away. Oh my God. That's probably fake, but still, it was entertaining to see the human, the human trajectory towards wealth and fame. Um anyway, so the guy buys the Lamborghini, goes ask the woman out on a date. She says, no, you're ugly. He goes and parks it in the barn. That didn't work. And then fucking never drives it again because it reminds him of being shot down. And the car just sits in there for 40 years. Let's see the fucking, that show. Let's see it. It's like pre-barn fine. So it's, uh, you know, the days before you lost your mind or whatever. I don't know what the fucking show is called. I'd figure out a name. That's one of my strong points, figuring out show names. Like the Dean's List, the Grail, Let There Be Talk. For those about to talk, fah! Um, anyway, let's see a show where they find the barn fine, but then it's just a fucking full reverse of how it got to that barn. What were the actions that the per other than death we always know that one that seems to be the most famous yeah he went off to war or uh you know he just he just died and uh we didn't know what to do with it it was just a lamborghini none of us drew drove a stick you know we're all fucking uh we're all millennials we don't drive uh stick shifters stick shifters with the three pedal we don't do three pedal we go uber so it just sat there and, and you know, quite frankly, it, it looked like it uh, could burn up some ozone. So I was triggered by the engine. <laughs> oh my God. Let's see that show though. Would you guys like to see that show? Fuck yeah, I would. Biden, it's all fucking Biden. But speaking of that, I was on... Uh, of selling shit on uh, Facebook Marketplace. I'm always selling shit, man. Seems like I fucking most of my life, I'm just fucking selling shit. I keep trying to get rid of shit. Anybody want to buy my 1952 J45? Give me a DM. I'm selling my J45. I'm just not playing. I don't play guitar. And, um, you know. So anyway, I'm on fucking Facebook Marketplace. Some guy is selling a G5 Gulfstream jet. <laughs> what the fuck? What, it, what are you doing? Putting a goddamn jet on Facebook Marketplace. Like you're just sitting around. 
You know, I'm thinking about buying me a G5 jet, but real quick, let me just check Craigslist and Facebook just in case some meth head selling one out there just unleashing their fucking jet. Who the fuck would buy a G5 jet off Facebook Marketplace? $7 million, Facebook Marketplace. You're out of here. What the fuck? I couldn't believe it, actually. Yeah, man, you know, I was going to go get a jet over here, but I got a good deal on Facebook Marketplace on my jet. Who would have thought to look for a G5 on Facebook Marketplace? Anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out there. It's fucking insane, you know? Um, All right, so yeah. Guess what? Kings of Leon got a new record coming out. I've been talking about Kings of Leon for years, since the day I saw him on the EP and one of my favorite songs, Wicker Chair. And I saw him at the Viper Room. I've, I've loved this band and I still love this band. And I've talked about it many times on the podcast. It gets old, I'm sure. But people abandoned the band after the big record. The hipsters went away. Oh, they sold out their soccer mom rock and and all that bullshit. Kings of Leon to me have always been fucking great. It's still the same four guys, the three brothers and the cousin. They they uh they released one of the most insane documentaries on a band I've ever seen about 15 years ago. My good friend um who produced the fucking records. And uh, it, who produced the big fucking one and uh, and did my record. We, I had him on the podcast. And, um, you know, we both talked about how fucking, uh, how people abandoned Kings of Leon, which is fucking weird. So they got a new record coming out. It's called Can We Please Have Fun? And they got the song out right now called Mustang. I love the title of the record because I know this band is, uh, you know, taking a lot of heat and, uh, I just don't, I don't understand a band that gets, um, you know, abandoned because they were, uh, they got popular. I, I never understood that, but they've always had great fucking songs and they're getting ready to go out on tour. So I hit up Kevin Christie and I was like, we got to go see this at the Kia forum. So, you know, I've said it before, I'm winding down my concerts, but I am going to see Kings of Leon, 100%. Their, their albums, all of them have great music, all of them. And you know what's crazy about Kings of Leon? They fucking come on and they don't sound like anybody. Try to name a band Kings of Leon sounds like. They come on, you go, oh, that's Kings of Leon, you know, immediately. And uh, the vocals are super unique. The riffs are super unique and the tone and the sound. So it's really, uh, really good to see that they're coming out. And fuck, they've been a band. How long have they been a band? Let's look real quick. These guys have been uh, a band for fucking ever, man. I mean, when I first moved to LA, let me look here. Kings of Leon. Um, here it is. The Kings of Leon. They started in 1999. Holy shit. So I moved to LA. When did I move to LA? When I was 35. I'm 58 now. So, um, you know, these guys have been playing forever. Nathan, Jared, and Caleb. And then Matthew on guitar, the cousin. Oh, my God. Go see that documentary. I don't know where you could see it, but uh, try to find it. I can't remember what it was called. Let me see if I can find the name of it. God, it was so good. Um, uh, let's see. And I still love Comes, uh, Come Around Sundown. What a fucking record, man. You know? Jakir King, he did my record, and he was, uh, he was on the podcast. And he talked about really some of the craziness of working with Kings of Leon, you know? And then when you see that movie, you're like, these guys are fucking nutty hillbillies. 
It is fucking real deal cool. Anyway, fired up for their new record. Can't wait. When does it come out? I don't know. I don't care. It comes out May 10th. God, it's still a ways away, but they're doing a tour. And uh, I got to go see it. That is all I know. I got to go see Kings of Leon. So shout out to Kings of Leon. Looking forward to, um, to the new record. The song's great. A lot of good music this year already. A lot of fucking good music. It's crazy. Um, you know, it, it's funny. I saw a little clip of David Lee Roth, Eddie Van Halen, and Mike. Ant was No, it was David Lee Roth, Eddie Van Halen, Alex Van Halen. I remember it was a promo when they got back together. They kind of did this interview, and then they chopped it all up. And it was some good stuff, kind of uncomfortable. It looks a little bit like there's still tension and weird weird friction they're not it's almost kind of like they put dave on this we'll fucking get back together but you got to let us talk you never let us talk dave well all right all right <laughs> so they're talking about how they went out on van halen one 1978 they toured sold a million records uh did a world tour went to japan all kinds of shit when they got back they owed the record company a million dollars and they sold a million records. They still owed the record company a million dollars. And, you know, that's back when bands sold records. So imagine now just fucking. Actually, now you make a record at your house for like forty six dollars. And then, you know, you just I don't know. I, I, I do not know what the future is for uh, musicians. But unless something changes, we could be seeing some of the uh, the last years of live music due to the uh, the cost of touring and uh, just all of that shit. Could just be holograms out there, people. Could be holograms. Anyway, Kings of Leon, shout out to you. I'm glad you're still doing it. I'm glad it's still the four guys. A lot like you too, other than Larry, uh, Larry Mullen sitting out the sphere run. Uh, you too, four original members, fucking great to see. None of this uh, logo rock band touring with no original members except the logo. Logo rock. <laughs> logo rock. Um, you two wound up their 40 shows on Saturday at the sphere. And each week I bring it up because it is still sitting in my heart. How fucking hard that show blew my mind. I'm still engulfed in the feelings that I got from that fucking show. And, uh, it looks like, uh, you know, a lot of people thought Larry Mullen was going to play the, uh, last two shows. The rumors were he was, and then he didn't, but he was at the show and uh, Bono addressed it on the stage. He said, you know, looks like a lot of people thought Larry would play the last two shows, but he's uh, we're still wishing him a speedy recovery, which it has not been very speedy. Let's be honest. And and in the uh, trade magazines over the weekend, they were saying he was recovering from neck surgery and other ailments. And that triggered something inside of me of like, wait a minute, they've got to be kind of whole, hiding something here, you know? Um, you know, I thought it was a back surgery. Then they, they say it's a neck surgery now and other ailments. So I'm not quite sure what's going on, but I do know that like uh, Danny, Danny Carey got a hip replacement. And they're so good at that shit now. He was playing again in like three weeks and he's out on this giant tour. And he he's plays like a fucking madman. And Larry is more of kind of a Charlie Watts type of player. And he's fantastic and he's killer at groove and everything. So I'm wondering, I don't know if there's uh, other things going on and I hope not. I hope he's just really taking it super easy until maybe U2 does a world tour with the new record coming out. Maybe that's it. But uh, 
when they say other ailments and then they don't say what it is, you're like, wait a minute, you don't just fucking throw that out there. Is he okay? That's one of their fucking brothers. They've been together since day one when they were kids. Larry put the note up on the bulletin board looking to start a band. So I don't know. I hope he's okay. Um, but congratulations to you two. Uh, not only for, uh, you know, the sphere run, but just, just playing at the highest fucking level right now at this age. And just, God, I've fallen way back in love with you two and Octung Baby again, which was always a favorite of mine. But you burn out on records. You play the fuck out of them. Octung Baby is a record I play whenever I have some heartache or or if I'm feeling down or depressed, I like to even ignite it a little more with a dark record. <laughs> Let's take this thing up to 10. Let's bring this depression full tilt. Let's put on some Joy Division. Let's put on some fucking Octung Baby. Let's put on some fucking Nick Cave. I want my depression to be on 10. <laughs> anyway, the guy's... I guess he's done sawing the body next door. Thank God. Oh, my God. Um. Oh, this just got announced. I'm going to be doing the Greek Theater in Berkeley, California with Bill Burr June 8th. And I cannot tell you how fucking fired, I am, fired up I am to play the Greek. I am slowly tapping off all the dream uh, venues in the Bay Area that I didn't play growing up as a musician. I did Oakland Arena with Bill, which was fucking a dream where I saw Van Halen, Fair Warning Tour, and Def Leppard, uh, Photograph, uh, Pyromania Tour, uh, Tom Petty into the Great Wide Open with Lenny Kravitz opening, uh, Rage Against the Machine, um, Battle of Los Angeles Tour, Bruce Springsteen, 99 Reunion E Street Band Tour, and on and on and on. So I did the Oakland Arena. I did the Chase Arena, which is new. And I got that out of the way. Got that fucking thing. Let me just get this fucking thing out of the way. Opening for Metallica. Taking shots to the face. And then uh, I've done the Warfield, which was a dream venue to do as comedy because I did it as a musician. Opening for Bad English. I did the uh, Fillmore um, opening for Rival Sons. Did a little comedy with Bob Weir in the crowd. And then uh, I headlined the Fillmore as a musician with the all-star band, Rami Jaffe on keyboards, my man Joey DeBona, bass, Ronnie Crawford drums, uh, David Emmergluck from the Counting Crows, on uh, pedal steel, Mark Ford, Black Crows on guitar, which shout out to Mark Ford. He is playing better than ever out doing a solo three-piece band. And also he is in Lucinda Williams band now. And holy shit, two of my favorite people together. Lucinda Williams, Car Wheels on a Gravel Road, Masterpiece with Mark Ford to her left side playing guitar, slide and everything, killing it. Mark is, Mark is, uh, he fucking crashed down, burned his career up to the ground and fucking is, the phoenix has risen, risen. He got a, he, he's got it together, man, over all these years and he's just playing like a fucking motherfucker and he's singing great. He sounds great singing. And man, you know, you just see that and you go, the Black Crows could have that. They could have, well, I don't even know if he would do it if they said want to do it, but the Black Crows, you know, all their dudes that have been in their bands are just fucking all fire. Anyway, Mark Ford, I love you, buddy. Go listen to his solo record, people. Just so good. Uh, the Devil is in the Detail is one of my favorite songs. Anyway, I'm going to be doing the Greek with Bill Burr. So uh, what else did I do? I've done um, that uh, San Francisco uh, Performing Arts Center there at the um, at the Exploratorium. I did that with Joey Diaz. 
what else have I done? I've done all that. Done the chapel, uh, which is great. I've done, um, I think I've done them all except for the San Francisco Civic now, which is pretty fucking wild. I did punchline, of course, many times and Cobbs, bimbos. I did comedy at bimbos. But looking forward to doing the Greek June 8th, the summer. Just being out there. I've seen so many great shows there. Tom Petty. Oh, my God. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Butthole Surfers. I saw Pearl Jam there. Great, great venue. They got the student student housing out there in the uh, out there in the uh, outfield of the venue. Students are just going to be hearing dick jokes that night, you know, trying to study for uh, some kind of makeup test, and they're hearing like, "What about a dick?" <laughs> we get to spin through uh, Berkeley. And hop over, hop over all the uh, lunatics out there. Berkeley's still locked in place as the uh, same feel and vibe. Maybe go get some uh, Indian food at one of my favorite places there. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. June 8th. Also, this weekend, don't be fucking sleeping, Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm coming to my favorite venue. I'm doing the Comedy Fort this weekend. Friday and Saturday. I love this place. I got a lot of new material and I really appreciate it if you spread the word and tell your friends that live out in Colorado. I'll be at Fort Collins, Colorado this weekend and the following weekend, I'm going to be in Minneapolis at Acme. Both these clubs are fucking A tier clubs and I have the most respect for these venues. So I'm really hoping some people show up Please, that's why I do the podcast. I've said it over and over. Get your ticket to deandelray.com and also visit my Patreon for over 140 bonus episodes. Um, also, while I'm in Berkeley, I'm going to go to Standard & Strange, my favorite leather denim and boot shop. So that's what I'll be doing during the day. Mr. Burr and I maybe will spin in there. Maybe Bill won't go. I'll go. Standardandstrange.com for all of your leather, denim, and boots needs. Talk to Jeremy and Neil, my favorite people, and uh, tell them you need a leather jacket. I fucking uh, love those guys. Hit them on Instagram, too. And also, maybe you need a guitar. My other sponsor, Banker Guitars. Matt Banker, out there killing it. Handmade boutique guitars. And I'm going to have him back on the podcast. He's making acoustics now. And we're going to dive deep into what the difference is of electric versus making an acoustic, man. It's got to be way fucking harder. I'm watching him do it. And uh, he's deep into acoustics now, which is really, really cool. Matt Banker, bankerguitars.com. Check it out. Check out their Instagram. Everybody's playing them. Marcus King, Mastodon, um, Rival Sons. People love their guitars. He said there's a one-year waiting list now. But get on the list and get yourself a premium handmade boutique guitar. Flying V's, Explorers, uh, Junior style cutaways, all kinds of great shit. He makes that arch top SG. Anyway, Banker Guitars. See you in Berkeley at the Greek, June 8th. A uh, couple more things, then we'll get out of here. Thank you for tuning in. I love all you guys. And I really appreciate you guys uh, joining me each week. I uh, got some good guests coming up. I found uh, Jordan, the lost art guy. Remember I was talking about uh, this guy that made all this leather stuff for me and Lenny Kravitz and Axl Rose and Cheryl Crow and Willie Nelson. And I found him. And he's making choppers out in Miami now. So I'm going to interview him tomorrow. And uh, I cannot wait to talk to him about from going from leathers to kind of disappearing to now making choppers out in Miami. So looking forward to talking to him. Um, and uh, like I said, Matt will be on from Banker Guitars. That's coming up. Some other great guests. I love all you guys. Candles are lit. Happy birthday, Roger Daltrey, 80. Fucking guy turned 80, still out there touring, 
singing. I want to fucking live to be 80 and be touring still. I want to be an old man out there like, man, you fucking got me. You don't fucking do. <laughs> Happy birthday, Roger Daltrey, 80. All these rock guys, man, they're getting up there. They are getting up there. If they're still alive, they're getting up there. If they're still alive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're still alive, you're getting up there. That's a fucking, that's some uh, wisdom from the Delray. That's a, uh, what is that, a haiku? <laughs> what the fuck's a haiku? I can't remember. If you're still alive, you're getting up there. Roger Daltrey, happy 80th birthday. Eminence Front, one of the greatest fucking songs of all time. Farewell Tour, The Who, 1982. Still going. Candles lit, people. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, I'll see you soon out there. All right.